for those of you who don't know, but I also feature sarcastic commentary on my Patreon, which isn't posted anywhere else. I thought that it would be fun to highlight the top Snark Room every single day as an incentive to get people to join. I finished up The Sound of Silence, and although it ended on a cliffhanger, I could not care less that I was unable to find the second book of the series. Then I started in on the second book of the Fury trilogy, which felt like the awkward middle book in a trilogy that accomplishes nothing except to pout out a trilogy. And finally, I do seem to have broken my streak of ending the month with one chapter of a new book. I started in on When You Make It Home. We're not putting ourselves into more debt on my account. I agree. Getting a second car is 100% not worth it, especially when Alex is, doesn't even have a job. He can walk home from school. It's honestly not that big of a deal. Mr. Morgan told me he understood Darren had upset me, but crude hand gestures were not the solution. Right, but what exactly did the teacher do when Darren accused Wes of making up stuff? What do you mean the teacher stood by and let it happen with zero effort to stop the bickering? I must have tired myself out during gym. Normally I was cast aside and made to sit out, but this time I actually played and worn myself out. But why? It's only his throat that's injured. The rest of him works perfectly fine. Wes asked if Alex has been kissed before and somehow seems to think that the brutal heated kiss he'd given Alex in the car doesn't count. I think we all know why. Martin had signed about his upcoming birthday. He would be turning 15 and said that he wanted to spend much of the day playing in the arcade in Port Mercy. Warren hadn't appeared too enthusiastic about his youngest laid out plan to do this, especially since there was no one to go with him. Wes had already turned down the request since arcades weren't his kind of thing. Excuse you? It is his birthday. I think you can give up a couple hours of your life to take your brother or son to the forking arcade. How rude. Darren is trying to claim it was in retaliation to a racial attack by you, but you wouldn't believe how many people are sticking up for you, Lex. If he wanted to beat Lex up and then claim racial defense, he probably shouldn't have tried to falsely accuse Alex of saying racial slurs in history class literally a few hours earlier. Literally, nobody thinks that it was racial because they all saw Darren making a donkey out of himself. Also, also, but if one kid is in the hospital and the others walked away without a scratch, I think we all forking know what happened. It's not charity, it's so we can communicate better, I told him, hoping he would listen. I know you've tried to learn to understand me, but most of the time you don't, and I have to write notes to you instead. At least this way I feel like we're actually having a conversation. I've done my best by you, son. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. It'll take time for me to learn to understand your sign language. Jeez, it's honestly not that hard to learn sign language, especially when his own son is mute and relies on it for communication. I'm not sure that his dad is even trying all that hard. After some browsing, I discovered I could connect to the internet using the wireless connection of someone living nearby. The reception was pretty good. Of course, I knew all about a certain social networking site. Show me a teenager that didn't. This feels like it was written by a baby boomer trying to write a teenager. There's even a fully knowledgeable person to teach everyone, too. A teacher. The word you were looking for is teacher. Look, this has nothing to do with Alex's physical health and is more about how literally not one single person has talked about him getting into intense therapy. Not even about the beatdown the other day, but more about literally everything that's happened to him. Stuff like the dog attack and his mom saying, Forkity bye. I'm confused over what there is to apologize for. Like, sorry that you wandered into an active construction zone ignoring all and any safety warnings and got yourself beamed over the head with a concrete pipe. The reviews warned me about Skylar's character, so I'm going to say this. I'm sorry that all of that happened to you, but your background doesn't excuse your shirty behavior. Yes, she hasn't done anything yet, but I have a feeling that it's going to become a reoccurring theme here. The Mexican place. I saw you eyeing it. The food at that place is like styrofoam. Deep fried styrofoam, of course. Of course it is. It's in Maine. Nobody who lives in Maine would know what real Mexican food was. Do you know how forking shallow and shirty that you're being right now? Even if you remove the supernatural elements and pretend like M was telling the truth, how forking shirty do you have to be in order to say one of multiple school dances is clearly more important than you studying for the SATs? It's not even the forking dance. It's a group that decides what kind of decor to have at the dance. Nope. Directly into the pit of hell you go, Batch. You don't get redemption after that. 
like it's funny how up until this chapter is kind of like ah she's not so bad and now that the reviews warned me that she was without redemption but maybe it will be a slow descent but nope instead it instantly went from nothing to stealing her aunt's stuff like a druggie in need of her next fist with nothing in between what the heck now that she had some distance and was embarrassed and had been a little scared by how she'd behaved on jd stoop that wasn't her that was someone darker someone worse but the problem is that the narration has never once tried to paint Emily as anything other than the shallow girl who uses people as it suits her, exactly as Drea said. You took the only thing that mattered, Em croaked out. The only thing that mattered? Honey, you are 17 years old. Jeez, there will be other boys. Get some gosh darn priorities and a new hobby. Look, I'm sorry that her parents have these you-must-go-to-Duke-like-your-brother's expectations, but literally nobody is forcing her to be the head cheerleader, be on the dance committee, and be the most popular girl in school, so my sympathy only extends so far, especially when most of the shirt she's complaining about are situations 100% of her own making. Not like Skylar, whose closet was filled with clothes that would look good once she lost a few pounds, whose makeup bag was packed with various tubes of cover-up to hide her seemingly constant rotation of breakouts. I would like to remind everybody that Skylar was gosh darn 14 years old when her mom and older sister said that shirt to her. 14 years old. She is literally a child. Telling an adult, oh, well, what's that? Look, I'm all for letting girls have their creepy faces, but the line needs to be drawn at literal animal sacrifices. And it's really worrying at how JD saw that with no context, but didn't tell his parents, Adam's parents, a teacher, anybody. I'm all for asking the hard-hitting questions, but the problem is, does M seriously want to be haunted by those jerkwads forever? Get rid of them and then ask why Drea is obsessing over them. Just a practical joke that went a little too far. A practical joke is putting somebody's stapler in jello is practically criminal conduct to knowingly do somebody with something that they are allergic to. At least with Chase, there was at least some measure of me feeling sorry for him. With Skylar, I legit don't give a shirt. And I'm honestly kind of happy that she's going to get what's coming for her. I know that somebody out there would argue that Meg and the others pushed Skylar into doing that stuff. But honestly, she was already tempted. They only encouraged her to do what she'd been thinking about. Also, if this is Skylar's end, I'm kind of frustrated that we never actually found out what she did. I really hate the way that the author shows the characters getting punished. And then she's like, oh yeah, they did this really terrible, awful thing. Almost like an afterthought. Fire sprinklers? <laughs> well, what are those? I know that this book is set in the Oz, but I swear that my high school had them. I went to high school around this time, and the building was built in the late 90s. It's not that odd to think that they would have put fire sprinklers into a building where people would want to routinely burn it down. So let them assume. You shouldn't have to answer to anyone. I agree. People would have talked even if the baby was Bradley's. Oh no, she's having a baby out of wedlock. For shame. People are forking shirty and will judge you no matter what you do. So go out and live your best life and fork the haters. The best way for Meg to deal with this would be to look that jack donkey directly in the eye and tell him why the hell would Brad need to know about the baby. He wasn't even there for the conception. Which, if Jake doesn't understand that, then he's literally too stupid to be a father himself. So that's it. I'm sorry I knocked you up, but like, bye? Girl, drag his behind a cord and demand he pay through the nose to help support the baby. Tell the entire forking world whose child it is. Maybe it'll make him have some regrets for hanging up on her and saying, I don't care. He wasn't exactly rushing to offer up any help when he found out somebody else had beaten him to it. In fact, the way I remember it, he disappeared for days when his sister told him about the baby. Not exactly the definition of stable. As much as I've been making all the rude comments about C's bad behavior, jeez, at least he's physically there for his sister. At least he's coming around. Or his own gosh down further can't even be bothered. At least stepmom made a call, even if it was to be shirty towards Meg. Dad can't even manage that much. My body vibrated with elation and soreness for the most inspiring sex of my life, all-encompassing joy found in the arms of the man I loved. Love. The two of them barely know one another. Slow down. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, you can read the entire stock in full context on my Patreon for $1 a month. Come back next month for more out-of-context comments.